Welcome back, it's Peter Bowers here, cardiologist. Now, another common topic when we look at heart health is the use of pacemakers. Now, you might have been asked to have a pacemaker and you want to know, well, what is a pacemaker and what does it actually do? Well, here we will review all aspects of what pacemakers are and uh, what you need to know about them. Okay, so a pacemaker essentially is a device. It's a battery and a computer chip that is placed inside the body and typically under the skin, normally under the collarbone. And it's a little device here that you can see that has an area where leads plug in. And these leads go through the veins in our upper arm, all through into the vein, the main vein which drains into the heart, into the right atrium, and then the right ventricle. And essentially what this device is, it helps the heart to beat, to contract. Now the heart itself has a very intricate array of networks and cables. And these wires and cables are within the heart itself, and it's like turning on a light switch. So when you turn the light switch on, the light automatically goes on. Well, essentially for the heart to contract, boom, 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 we need it to start from some spot, from some uh, site in the heart. So that starts from a site called the sinus node. And the sinus node I like to explain to my patients is the power station of our heart. And then electrics and power supply goes down through another cable of fibers into a smaller substation called the AV node. And then from there it travels down two, two major bundles of wires and cables to make the heart and the ventricles contract. So you get the top part of the heart, the sinus node firing off, you get your boom, and then your bottom part of the heart contracts where the ventricles eject all the blood out of the heart, boom, 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 boom. Now, to do that, of course, the heart needs an electrical network, an electrical supply, and inbuilt in our heart, we have what we, we call a pacemaker. So the sinus node essentially is a pacemaker, that power station that I said. And that is what a pacemaker is, that it triggers off electricity to keep electrical signals traveling down the heart for the heart to beat and do its job. So when may you need a pacemaker? Well, a pacemaker may be needed when your own cables and networks and wires around the heart or within the heart muscle become weaker, become more tired, are not working as well. No, there are several causes for this. And obviously, as we get a bit older, the body and the cabling and the wiring of the heart does get a little bit more tired. But there are often other conditions that can affect the heart itself that might cause a little damage to these wires. The most common being you know, heart disease and cholesterol blockages in the arteries of the heart that can develop um, reduction of blood flowing to certain parts of the heart. Well, again, equally, if there's not a lot of blood going to that little power station which triggers off the heart, that will start slowing down. Equally, there are conditions of the heart that can actually affect the muscle, and they might be congenital conditions, so rhythm disturbances that people might be born with. But these disturbances can affect the electrics of the heart, and thereby the heart may need a bit of backup, a bit of support by using a pacemaker. So where is a pacemaker actually placed? Well, a pacemaker is normally placed beneath the skin, and that's what we call the permanent type of pacemaker. And that is placed beneath the skin within the muscle tissue itself, normally under the collarbone. Now, we often ask our patients, are you left-handed or right-handed? because we don't like to use the dominant side. We use that are what we call temporary pacemakers. And they often occur in a hospital setting when there's an emergency, when the heart typically stops or slows down very suddenly, maybe in the context of a heart attack, and we just need a bit of time for the heart muscle to recover. Well, then we can use a temporary pacing wire that is typically placed from the vein either in the groin or in, in the arm, 
and that can go down into the heart as a single lead typically that just helps support the heart when the wires or the electrics of our own heart are failing. So how is a pacemaker placed? Well, a pacemaker is typically placed with some local anesthetic around the area and some sedation. So it's not a full or general anesthetic. You are given some sedation and it's not a very uncomfortable procedure. And you will have a little incision placed under the skin. And then from there, the doctor and your cardiologist will place some tubes or catheters within the veins themselves to allow passage of these wires. And typically there are two wires for each pacemaker, but sometimes we might put three wires, depending on the condition that we are dealing with and the benefit that the patient will receive really depends on what's actually caused the underlying problem. A common question is, how long do pacemakers last? Well, the built-in batteries typically last for many, many years. Now, again, there's no one hard, fast rule for all pacemakers, but they can vary from seven years to eight years to 10 years, or it may be shorter. Now, what determines the duration of the pacemaker? Well, how often is the pacemaker being used? The pacemakers are very sophisticated, so what they do, they stay in the background and they just monitor the heart using these leads. And they, when they sense that your heart's doing its own thing on its own without any question or, or problem, it doesn't do anything. However, if it senses that the heartbeat is dropping, and we can set that normally to about 50 beats per minute or 60 beats per minute. Well, then once it senses that, it triggers off itself and it starts allowing the heart to contract. So thereby, you won't notice your heart dropping and it will just be fixed normally at that bottom rate, typically around 60 beats per minute. When a pacemaker needs to be changed, well, again, the battery is monitored periodically, every six months, every 12 months, and you go to what we know as a, a pacemaker clinic or a device clinic, or you might even have a, a remote monitor whereby you have a little device at home that can transmit data from your pacemaker, send it to your physician, and we, we are able to assess and interrogate how your pacemaker is functioning, whether everything is all working well, and how often it's being used, and also how long the battery has to go. We obviously don't want the battery to uh, discharge or to go flat completely. And that's, uh, you know, can be an issue in those people who are dependent on the pacemaker. And that's why close monitoring of a pacemaker is important. So we can track the duration of the battery. And then when it's coming up to, you know, a few months before it's about to go flat, well, you will have a replacement pacemaker. And essentially what happens there, the leads that are already implanted remain in there but the can or the little metal chip and the battery component, which normally sits under the collarbone, the incision is made again, that battery is removed and a new one is, is placed. And often, you know, that's a, a later generation, a newer technology, and the batteries potentially last even longer than your original pacemaker. So life doesn't change with a pacemaker. And in fact, the aim of having a pacemaker is to stop you from having slow pulse rates. And there are people whereby the heart just slows down so much and profoundly quite slow, where it actually stops beating for a few seconds. And that can be a problem. When the heart doesn't beat, you don't generate blood getting out from the heart into your brain, into your body, and that can cause fainting or blackouts, passing out. And it's not an infrequent occurrence whereby patients who present with a fall and a blackout. And we, we look at you know, how the heart's been performing and we do identify that the wiring or the electrics of the heart are going so slow that a pacemaker is needed. Pacemakers don't normally help when the heart is racing too fast. So the simple types of pacemakers that we have are not pacemakers that deal with fast heartbeats and it's typically ones that we use to prevent the heart from going too slow. 
There are other types of devices and they are a bit more sophisticated than just a pacemaker. And we'll have a separate video on these types of pacemakers and devices known as defibrillators that might be useful in situations where the heart is going significantly fast. But essentially the pacemaker is there as a device that gives us support to ensure that the heart does not slow down too much to ensure that it can continue doing what we want it to be doing and it's to, to beat and to allow blood to travel all, our, all around our body. And it's a very simple procedure nowadays. There are a few risks that your doctor will talk to you about. Obviously, any device that is implanted in the body, we have to you know, specify the risks of infections, and that's obviously one consideration. You might also have other complications discussed with you, of course, infection being one, bruising or bleeding around the pacemaker site. And obviously with any cut or any incision that is made in the body, there is always that risk, particularly if there is a history of being on blood thinning medication. But the serious risks are very, very rare. But again, having a pacemaker is not the end of the world. Uh, typically, there were concerns about having MRI scans. And if you have an MRI scan for your back, for your neck, for some other part of your body, well, typically when we used to have the older generation pacemakers, they were metallic, they were not compatible with magnets. So that was a major, major issue. But now modern day pacemakers, typically in the leads, you can safely have an MRI, but always check with your physician and your treating team about what type of pacemaker you have, what model of pacemaker you have to ensure that it is compliant with an MRI machine. Uh, other than that, as I said, traveling, that's another common question we get asked, what happens when I go to the airport? Well, again, you might um, you might uh, alarm as you go through the, uh, the scanner. Uh, airports are very well used to managing with this and uh, each patient who has a pacemaker place will have a ID card given to you about the make and the mod, when it was implanted, who is your physician, and that card you simply need to show to airport staff to uh, allow you to, um, to uh, bypass the scanner. Life otherwise continues as normal, but again, hopefully without the risk of your heart slowing down too much, causing complications. So again, in this short video, I just wanted to outline what pacemakers are, what you need to know about them. Please feel free to make some comments below as to any questions you might have. Again, keep it general in nature. The channel is purely educational. We can't address any specific questions you might have about your heart health. But of course, as always, subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.